I'm trying to talk to you about this. I am going to. The reason I started. I started this, hang on, hang on. Hang on. No, no, no. I am saying the most important discussion to take place between Muslims and Christians should start from where? In the concept of God or concept of man? Concept of God. Concept, concept of, God. of God. Right. So let's deal with that then. Let's deal. No, let's no, deal no, no. I, 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 I. I am jumping topic because that's the most important thing to discuss between Muslim and Christians. Well, me and my friend were doing a video about this and this hadith. So yeah, but until you deceived me, until you deceived me, until you deceived me, until you deceived me, did you do you admit do you admit that you deceived me? I opened another No, 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 no. You were reading. Just no, no, you never open up and say I'm sorry. I did this without realizing that it was a deception. Go and admit it. I, I be a man and admit your mistake. Be a man enough, he admit your mistake. He never said that he's, he never told me, hang on by the way. He didn't, he was, when he, when he reached the mountains of Tuhama, he stopped there. Then he went to a second hadith thinking that I don't know my hadith. And I say to him, and I say to him already. You caught him red handed. Yes, I say to him already. If you come to Muslim, the exegesis of Imam Nawawi, I am a student of the hadith of Imam Nawawi and the, so I know my hadith. Yeah. And then he didn't apologize. And that's he why you gave, still that's why you asked me to come in and talk to him. Yes. And, 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 and. What's, no, what, you what's your name? What's your name? No Muslim would die, and but I, Allah would admit in his death. What's your name? What's your name? I did. Oliver, Oliver. What I am saying, my name is Mansoor. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The most important discussion to take place between Muslims and Christians is not about, can you explain this biblical verse to me? Can you explain this hadith to me? Can you explain this Quran to me? Can you explain? No. God. Do you? Wait, wait, wait. I'm now going to come and ask you this question. I've, I've changed the topic altogether. Why are you so scared to talk about the most important Discussion to have between Muslims and Christians. Why is Koska? I think this is important. No, this is not the most important. Well, I think it's very the most, no, the most important thing. What did God, Jesus say? The first commandment is what? Nothing. Know that human beings are all about God. He said the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart. So it's about, it's about God. This is the second, but anyway, it's about God. So now, do you think the one who we should wor worship should be worthy of our worship? Right. So anyone who is not worthy of our worship, can you call this being God? No, like no. a like a tripod? No. no. Good. Do you consider Jesus worthy of our worship? Yes. Right. So you consider Jesus to be worthy of worship yes. and he is able to be called God, right? Yes. Okay. What are the most essential attributes of God to be worthy of worship? Does he have to be self-sufficient, independent and absolute? Or does he not have to be? I mean, I think God is uncreated and eternal. I didn't use the word uncreated. So let me, let me rephrase my question. Rephrase it, rephrase it. For any human beings to worship anyone and take that thing as God, they or it must possess certain attributes of qualification. Self-sufficiency, being absolute and independent. Do you agree? Right. Was Jesus self-sufficient, absolute and independent? In the context of the Godhead, he depended on the Father. So you answered my question openly and clearly that he was dependent. Anyone who is dependent by definition is not independent. So Jesus, in your own admission, thank you very much, Oliver. You made my case very clearly that Jesus is not worthy of worship and Jesus is not God. Now, I, do you stand corrected in your belief? I suppose in the same sense that my heart depends on my lungs to get oxygen around my body. But there's still one... Any oxygen. being who is not independent yeah. and dependent in any form, shape or way is not worthy of worship. You agreed to that already. So that's the definition that we are working on. Yeah. Jesus, in your own admission, yeah. you said he is dependent on someone else. On the Father, yeah. So if he's dependent on someone else means he's not independent of that individual or that entity or that thing or that yeah. persona or hypostasis, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. By that admission, yeah. Jesus is not God and he's not worthy of worship. So now you've learned something today. I want you to really admit that honestly, I was wrong all along to worship Jesus and call him God. In a 
sense that I think he's the image of God. Doesn't matter whether you call him With image all, or reflection, all... he's not worthy of worship in any way, shape or form because he is not independent and absolute and self-sufficient. Otherwise we will all be worthy yeah? of worship. Because... Do you realize, Oliver, to refute the divinity of Jesus Christ, it only takes 30 seconds. And you go along, beat around the bush. Jesus, yeah. as you realize, not being self-sufficient, not being independent and absolute, he is not God and not worthy of worship. In fact, he himself worshipped God. God doesn't worship anyone else. God doesn't have a God and Jesus had a God. He said, I'm going to my God and your God. So by his own admission, Jesus, you have dishonored him, disrespected him by making him into a God and worshipping him. He's free from all of that. And I think, Oliver, it's only, you know, the right heart to say, I need to abandon calling Jesus God and worshipping him, knowing and understanding that he is not worthy of worship. But I don't believe that God's word can be corrupted. And in the New Testament, Jesus is always worshipped. Like Thomas falls down and says, my Lord and my God, and he worships him. Christ doesn't say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. He accepts worship like God. So either it's shirk well, what's or worship in, in uh, No, no, sorry, what's so, worship brother, in... in... Sheikh, if somebody comes and starts worshipping Oliver, yeah. that would make Oliver God and worthy of worship according to your criteria. But I would Do you agree with that? I would tell the man to get up wait, 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 wait. worship me. If you didn't, imagine now someone like um, a, you know, someone having fun and Oliver goes on and starts worshipping and this guy says, you are blessed, you know what, I will give you whatever you want. Does that make that individual that you are worshipping God? No. Excellent. So now you now refute it by your own criteria, your earlier example about someone worshipping Jesus, because even if someone did worship Jesus, it doesn't make Jesus God. Well, can, I add, can I add just, you know, you know the word worship in, uh, in, uh, in Greek, that is used actually, it is. okay, preskinyu. Preskinyu, it doesn't mean like worship, worship. It means kind of, that's it. So all you, you go to the any any word where you find worship, the the correct translation is not actually worship as you understand worshiping in homage. It's like paying homage. It's like kind of like a respect. For him. Like me when I see my granddad, I can, when I used to see him, is that my Allah have mercy on his soul? I used to kiss his hand. So that's kind of you can call that worship. Kind of like. But it's not the worship that you, you think... Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so Jesus, of course, he called people to worship, using the word, worship him. Yeah. Thou shall you serve, pointing to one in heaven. Yeah. And he didn't say, worship me. Instead, he says, worship him. But he did say, but you believe in God, believe also in me. Now, could I say to you, if you believe in Allah, believe also in me. Look, we are talking about whether Jesus is God or not. Yes. Does God have a God? Within the Godhead, there are persons. Does the God the Father have a God? But our, no, but he does. But Jesus did say, honor, "Father, honor me and glorify me with the glory I have with, with you before the world was." Who gave him the glory? The Father. Right. He glorified him. Okay. Let's 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 really understand this. God gave him the glory, so he was glory-less before he received it. If you were glory-less at one point before you received it, were you God then? The answer is no. So if God gives you the glory, would that make you God? I don't think God can glorify me. And wait, 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 wait. If God gave you the glory, like Jesus says. But it's a straw man because God would never glorify okay. a uh, I, I'm answering, I'm answering. Jesus said, the glory that you gave me, I gave it to them. So he gave the same glory that he received to his disciples. Now, Oliver, you must worship the disciples as God, according to your own logic again. Unless you are being consistent and say that doesn't make someone God by receiving glory. Because the disciples received the same glory God gave to Jesus. It doesn't make disciples God. It cannot make Jesus God. Where did he, sorry, um, where did he, where did he glorify the disciples? John chapter 17. Do you, do you have a Bible? I'll show it to you. Can I add to it? Yeah. Does anyone have a Bible? I want to show it to him no, no, from, no, from the but, gospel. But can I add something? God in the Old Testament said, said, my glory I share with no one. No one. That, yeah. that if you Contradiction. Jesus Contradiction. God, a plurality of persons within God. Plurality of persons? Yes. Are you trying to, to, to teach yeah. us modalism in here? 
Not modalism. It's modalism if you said the plurality. Three you say one. Have always been together. In three harmony. persons, you mean? Three, three persons. persons. Sorry, three persons. So are they co-equal? Here. Not, not in, not in their role. Um, in the God. Just like how my liver. Just want to, just want to show him. Biblegateway.com. It's not a Muslim website. Do you agree? Is it, is it King? I only read the King James. Though. Is it King James? You can read any any version you want. I read King, but is that King James? Though? I will give you King James. Thank you. Bible Gateway, yeah? So it's a Christian yeah, yeah, website? Yeah, I know, I know. Right. So let's go and choose your version. King James. Let's find King James. King James version. John 17. And here is the verse in question. You want to read? Sorry, F Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you have loved me before the creation of the world. Okay. Righteous Father. Hold on. Maybe just a verse before that, sorry. Hang on. Here. Verse 22. Ah, I've given them the glory that you gave me. The name, well, yeah, it's true. So, I have given them the glory that you gave me. And he gives the reason why. That they may be one as we are one. Yeah. Christians comes along and says, Jesus said, I am the Father, I am one. Yeah. And then the whole Christianity believes that makes Jesus God yeah. along with the Father. Now Jesus is saying, I am giving the same glory yeah, yeah, that will yeah. make all the disciples one with us. Yeah. So how many gods? Too many. To count. But wouldn't you say he's, distingu he's distinguishing there between th them be one and then he's going to paint a, a division as we are one. So he's saying he and the Father are one and let them be one as no, we are one. No, he says just, just as you are one, my prayer is not them alone. I pray also for those who believe in me that they all may be one, Father, Father just yeah. as you are in me yeah. and I am, I am in you. May they also be one in us, yeah. so the world. So he is not making any distinction between his oneness yeah, yeah, yeah. with the oneness of the disciples. So, the so, so now, so now we realize Jesus Christ is refuting once again you when you said that makes him God because God had given him the glory. He refutes you by saying receiving glory doesn't make you God because if it did so, then all the disciples are God too. Are you a Mormon, by the way? No. no. Okay, fine. Evangelical. Evangelical. So now you realize Jesus Christ is dependent that makes him not God. Jesus Christ himself said that he cannot be God because of all of these things. So Oliver, when are you going to accept and admit saying, I have to stop calling Jesus God and worthy of worship. Rather, I need to return, you should say, return to the God of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ said, I'm going to my God and your God. So why don't you worship the God of Jesus Christ? Because I believe he just made too many statements that went too far. No. Nope. In fact, if I were to ask you, yeah, yeah, yeah. who is the only true God according to you? Uh, Yehovah. yod heh vau -He. Yeah, and Yehovah is three persons, right? Yeah. So, who is the only true God? The Father only? The Son only? The Holy Spirit only? Or all three of them? All three are God. All three are the only true God, right? Yeah. <laughs> what did Jesus say in this same chapter, John 17? On the same chapter. Let's see, Jesus agrees with you or refutes you. Okay. Now, this is eternal life. That they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. But he wasn't so, supposed to call him like the, wait, wait. God. Oh, please, please. Sorry. According to Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah. in your Bible, the only true God is not the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as you assert. Wrongly, Jesus Christ refutes you by saying the only true God is the Father and he's the one who sent Christ as a messenger well, we because that's read, what it is. Well, we Someone have to read who sent. this in the context. Read really it in the context. And, and John, I have read the whole context. And how, and how does the Gospel of John start out? Where in anywhere of the New Testament, anywhere, well, how does where, where Jesus Christ himself identifies only true God other than the Father. Go on. I'm saying, how does the Gospel of John start out? No, I'm saying we need verses which are clear, unambiguous, without any explanation necessary. Here in this verse, Jesus is saying the only true God is the Father. Yeah, but John never intended for you uh, to just start please, at please, chapter please. 17. No, what I'm saying, start from the beginning. Oliver, what I'm asking you, if you 
go back to the Old Testament. Here, God doesn't give you ambiguous statement about who God is and who should worship. He says, I am God. I don't think John is ambiguous one, one, about one second. Jesus being God. We, we will test that. In the Old Testament, God says, I am God. There is no God before me. There is no God after me. I alone am God and there is none else. Is this verse ambiguous? Can you get Tony in there and say Tony is also God? Can you? Can you get Tom in there and say Tom is also God with that? You can't. Because it's absolutely crystal clear. Unambiguous. Okay. If God could do that in the Old Testament to save people from this confusion about worshipping someone else along with God, he should also make this clear in the New Testament. Yeah. Where in the New Testament? God or Jesus Christ himself said the only true God is who and, uh, and the identification is given. Go on. So I think we have to read it in context. In context with a clear and ambiguous verse. Okay, so the Gospel of John starts out with in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. And then if it goes into verse 14 it says and the Word became flesh and we beheld his glory, the, only, the glory of the only begotten of the Father. Who's speaking? Who's speaking? John. I did ask you to give me verses from who? God himself or Jesus himself? We believe all scriptures God breathed. The men, when they were Paul disagrees with you. Paul gives scriptures that he says is from myself and not from God. Yeah, I know what you're on about. No, no, not, not one about. You need to be very, very honest to your own self. It's not about you, not the verse. Look, look. look. The you said it's God breath. Paul says no. In the Bible, there are statements where it's not from God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So I you stand corrected. Good. So now. Where did God himself I think God allowed that verse to go in because it agreed with Where did God himself or Jesus make absolutely clear without any ambiguity about who the only true God is? I give you one, one verse which is so clear. You dispute that. So now find us a verse where we can then say, oh, the other verse clarifies. What other verse are there in the Bible? Revelation. Mm. What, yeah. did the, what did it say? What, is, what does God say in there? What does Jesus say in there, in Revelation? But well, Jesus says, I am the first and the last, which is, which is one of some of the 99 names of Allah, the first and the last. Wait, wait, wait. Don't bring, go to Quran or Bhagavad Gita no, to no, help no. you. We'll so, we want to understand where the only true God is identified. Only true God. So we want words like God, yeah. words like true, and words like only to exclude everything else. Yeah. I give you a verse, John 17, 3, which is so clear. And and sorry, just to add, only in Greek it means monos, because some people like to monos, it, mean, it means absolutely exclusive yeah. that you cannot yeah. add anything in its place. So, can monos. you find a verse in the Bible, like in Revelation, where the only true God is identified? You are saying someone says, I am Alpha and Omega, the alphabets of the Greek language. First and yeah. last, because that's, 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 that's alluding to him being eternal. First and last what? Creation? Well, no, I mean, I think the, the title what? of the... It doesn't say. So we want God, we want to know God identified in this verse. Can I just add to that? Uh, before, before, Sheikh, 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 uh, Sergeant uh, Trump. No, no problem. I know you're going to talk about Melchizedek, is that right? No, 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 Okay, no, no. let me talk about Melchizedek and okay. then you'll say. Okay, Now, if we find in the Bible someone who has no beginning and no, no end. No father, no mother. No mother, no father, no genealogy. Mm. So, you're saying someone first and last. I'm giving better than that. Someone has no beginning and no someone end. has no end. No father, no mother. Would that be God? No father and no mother. No, Absolutely. no beginning and no end. Yes, but he's referring there to the context that he I am asking a, an individual. He doesn't have a genealogy. There's, I'm not talking about genealogy. I'm talking about who says... No, 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 no. No, no, no. I am no saying end. someone who's identified with no beginning yes. and no end. Would that be God? Yes. Right, so Melchizedek is God. So you have Father, Son, Holy Spirit and Melchizedek. Four in one. In that con in that context. Melchizedek, was the time, Melchizedek was the time of Abraham. 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 And he gave him one tenth. Can, I, can yeah. I explain? Yeah, tell me now, why is Melchizedek not God while being no beginning, no end? Because it's not saying he literally like never had a mother and father. He's an eternal I'm not talking about mother and father. I'm talking about no beginning, no end. But, can Stick to that point. Can I yeah. But he's saying that in, he, he has no genealogy. I'm not talking about genealogy. Let me, let, 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 let me help you. No, no, don't talk about genealogy. Don't talk about father. Don't talk about mother. Talk about 
No beginning, yeah. no end. I'm saying in Genesis 14, when Melchizedek first pops out and blesses Abraham, he just pops out of nowhere. Because he has no beginning, no where, end. Where, where does he come from? It's just because he has no beginning, no end. As the Bible says, he has no beginning, no end. He's a random figure that pops no, out of nowhere. No, he pops up because he already has no beginning, he has no end. No, and, and I, can, I, can I tell you another thing, just to put you at ease, yeah? You know, the historians like uh, B B Bart Ehrman spoke about this verse and he said it is an interpolation. You see, even... You're confusing him too much. Uh, Oliver, Oliver wants to be, you know, strict to this uh, verse. Let's deal with that. Jazakallah khairan. Right, right. So now we have identified two individuals. One says, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And another one says, I have no beginning, I have no end. Who is more worthy of calling God in here. Uh, the one who says well, no beginning, no end. Yeah, Melchizedek never, never claimed the title. It's not about claiming. The it's the attributes, Worthiness, it's the attributes, Worthiness. attributes that give someone this understanding. So do you call Melchizedek God? The answer is, of course, no. no. So your question about someone being even Alpha and Omega, it doesn't help you there because that cannot be God because that's less than being no beginning and no ending but one, saying, right? He wasn't but, saying but, but it in the, the way that you're thing. on about. He was saying it in the fact that he literally just pops out of nowhere, as in he has no beginning, no end, whereas most characters normally have a genealogy and some context to them. That's Does what God have a beginning? No. Does Milkinus have a beginning? Contextually in that story, it just, he pops out of nowhere. That's what it's referring it's to. It doesn't mean look, look, look. an eternal being. If, if, if an eternal being pops up here, yeah. does that make him non-eternal? Well, an eternal being can't pop up, they've always been. So no, no. I don't understand. No, no. If, if eternal being pops up in this reality in 21st century or 22nd century, what is it? 2024. 21st, 21st. Still 21st? Yes. yes if, a, if an eternal being popped up here in this time frame, does it make it non eternal? To be like if a, if a man just pops out. No, a man, eternal being. An eternal being. Yeah. It's a contradictory statement because eternal beings don't just pop up. They've a popping been up, it doesn't mean beginning of existence. Yes, yes. Popping up mean pop, popping up means just the appeared, eternal being appeared, was somewhere else appeared, and, and came on this time frame. Yeah, but it's not saying that about Melchizedek. What does it say about Melchizedek? No beginning of days, no end of days. Yes, it's not yes. written about him as days. It's not no, saying no, no. he literally. It doesn't, doesn't say. Have a you are now adding the words. You are now adding the words, being deceptive. Right. It doesn't say that. The Christians, when they realize they have their own scripture refuting them. They want to interpolate it. We won't allow you that because it's obviously clear. Absolutely. Now, even if Jesus said, I am the Alpha and Omega, which doesn't make anything about his divinity or his divineness, we're still asking you, Oliver, yes. why are you not abandoning him, calling him God and worshipping him? Melchizedek. No. Christ. Someone uh, less Christ. than that. Someone Christ. less than someone less Christ. than that. Christ. Jesus. Jesus. Someone less than Melchizedek. Why Christ. Why abandoning Christ? Why are you not abandoning calling, calling Christ God calling, and worshipping him? Calling, not because he's not worthy of being called God or even worthy of being worshipped as God because he is dependent on God. Yeah, I think the God within the Godhead is that they're all dependent on each other. It's really? Like, yeah. Then none of them are God. Yeah, but, that's, but that's still not God depending on something outside okay. of If outside the Father of depends on the Son for his existence, then he's not God. You are really in a mess but, but, now. But does he does he depend? No, does the father depend on the son? For his own life. They've, they've always been together, okay. you can't remove them. Okay. Has the father put no, okay, okay. So we have got Jesus praying to the Father. Yeah. Has the Father ever prayed to Jesus? Just, oh save me, my God. Yes, yes. Save Has he me. ever prayed to him? Like like Help me, like save he me. Said, my father. Did the father say, My son? Help me through this. Well, oh, my son. Well, when Jesus gets baptized, he does say, This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. So sort of Has the father ever oh, prayed okay, to okay. the son? Did you the know that Jacob before yeah. is his firstborn? Did you know that? Okay. Of, uh, of, the, of God. Well, he Adam, said, This, this well, is Jacob. This is Jacob, my firstborn. Okay. Yeah. My firstborn. So it's born. not literal. It's not literal. So now you realize that, yeah. When we talk about the Trinitarian belief system, None of them are God then, in your own admission. Because the Father is dependent on the Son, and the, the Son, Son is dependent, is dependent on, the on the Father. So, being interdependent, it makes them, none of them being God, and worthy of worship. Okay, but well, we have a different understanding. It's not a different understanding, you tell me. If none of them are independent, how can, they be how can you call them worthy of worship? 
Can I use an analogy? They're probably not going to like it. But just, right. like, just like how my, my lungs and my heart, they work together. I breathe in oxygen through my lungs and my heart then pumps it around my body. So they are dependent on each other, but within one being. However, if I was to have a ventilator outside of me, which is something outside of myself, then I would see that as dependence on something outside of myself. But this, the interdependence between in itself you is still just need something your within lungs. my being. You still need your lungs. You still need your lungs. Yeah. If we take the lungs and we put you that ventilator yeah, yeah? yeah, yeah. you won't live yeah. so, what, so no 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 yeah. it doesn't depend on them it doesn't depend on my heart still Let, depend let's, on let's really understand the examples yeah. okay. when it comes to the trinity yes. if the son didn't exist you're saying the father would not exist i'm saying that they can't they've always existed together so let's understand if the son yes. did not exist hypothetically I the father I, would not i can't do a hypothetical it's important to understand that because that's, you make a distinction so if the son did not exist the father would not exist as well but I think they've always existed together, so I don't know. Okay, so now you tell me, if, some, if something existed without a beginning, how is one the son of the other and the father of the other? Why don't you call them brothers? Why do you call one the father and the son of the other when, you can, when they have no beginning of existence? Why don't you call them brothers? It's much, much better fit. Well, because it kind of because he's the he's the word of God, so it's almost like the yeah, father. I think you're making some category mistake here. Look, you are saying this the son and father is depending to the son as well for his own existence, but we don't find in the Nicene Creed, neither the Constantinople Creed, they are saying the son is proceeding from the father. Yeah. Do you have any creed which is saying father is proceeding from the son or Holy Spirit? Well, no, I think they have different roles. So then you are saying this the only Son and Holy Spirit they are defending to the Father, not the Father. <laughs> yeah, but even even the Holy Spirit proceeds from both of them. Look, that's what he's saying. The son, yeah, you've got the Son yeah, proceeding from the Father, then the Holy Spirit is proceeding from both. So so if, if both of them are depending, then you can't say the yeah. other way around. I think it's, like, it's like a loving like, union. Always loving? Yeah. What's going no, 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 to do with no, it? Look, look. You, you, you're missing the point. Uh, even outside of the lab, if you, if you think this, they are proceeding, meaning they have the starting. <laughs> do, you, do you see the problem? Jesus, while he was walking on this earth, he would have made clear who he is, right? But why did he never say, I am not God? Wait, wait, wait. When he was walking around... Did he say, I'm good? No, he said, but did he say, I'm, no, no. I'm good? No, no, I, we so want I to... Dis like Sheikh, we want to dismantle... Uh, he said, I'm the son of man. We, he said, I'm yeah. the son of we man. We want to dismantle yeah. this okay. Christian script. Sorry, I do apologize. This yeah. evangelical script, let's dismantle it. I do apologize. It. I do apologize. No, it's okay, it's okay. I do apologize. Right. When he was walking around, what did people think about him, what he was saying about himself? Well, they tried to stone him many times, sir, because they said, you being a man, make Okay, himself. okay. If you were Jesus Christ and you made people clear that you are God on earth, do you think anyone have the audacity to come and stone you? You would turn them into turtles, wipe them out of existence. Do you think, wait, wait, wait. If, if Jesus went around telling people, I am God on earth, do you think people will have the audacity to go and try to stone him to death? Well, they didn't believe it. So they, they thought it was a blasphemy. So God comes along, tells people I'm God, and they say, what a liar you are, joker. Is that what you think they said? Why would they do that? I mean, say we're in a different... Wait, 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 wait. God, according to you, comes down on earth and tells people, I'm God. And you're saying, people will say, get lost. Really? Do they not feel the risk that is at, at stage now? They can be wiped away from existence if God wanted to do that. So why did people instead believe in him as a prophet, as a man doing miracles? Why? Why? Instead of that, instead of saying, ah, oh, God on earth is here, hallelujah, they went wrong praising God that he has sent a man, a prophet, to heal the blind, the lepers and the ill people. Absolutely. Why? Why did people do that? Well, they did also try and stone him for blasphemy. Because they said, you know when he forgave a man's sins, they were like, who can forgive sins but God? And they took up stones to when, stone him. When they wanted to stone him for blasphemy, yeah. do you accept their accusation is correct? Well, no, because I believe he was God. So they were falsely accusing him of blasphemy. So they picked up stones oh, to kill him. Right. So. Because they accused him, did he say, yeah, your accusation is false, because I am God? When he said, I've told you, and he didn't believe. No, no, did he say that actually I am God? So what do you mean by I'm blaspheming? Did he say that? 
You said, you say I blasphemy. Yeah, yeah. But, but I think you said I, something I, along those lines. I think you are missing one point. When you were saying they are accusing him, yeah. Jesus was saying, you are accusing him. Mm. So if the, their claim is right, why Jesus was saying they are accusing me? If it is right, why Jesus is saying it is accusation? Not why is he saying is right. accusation if that was actually right? Because they were making an accusation. No, no, no. If What's he was God, how can it be an accusation? How can he it be accusation? God, so yeah, how can they accuse him of being? Of being gay, but you're not gay. Then I've made an accusation. It doesn't matter but if sure Jesus is God and somebody says you are God, how is that an accusation? Accusing me of God. Because being God. When I'm God. It is correct, isn't it? Oh. It is correct. Yeah, it Oliver, correct. Oliver, I'm your You are Oliver. Yeah. Can I accuse you of being Oliver? You can accuse me. You are Oliver. But you are Oliver. So how can I accuse you of being Oliver? You are if I say to you, you are not Oliver, you go, no, I am must be mad. I'm Oliver. You're not going to have a fight with me saying... But he says you are Oliver. You are yeah. Oliver. Yeah. He said, no, you're accusing me. Accusing me of being Oliver. But I am Oliver. So, so what, what should be that Jesus respond? Jesus should respond, yes, you are correct. Why he saying you are accusing me? Because they weren't correct. Blasphemy oh, would... they weren't correct oh. by saying you are God? So he was not God. He was, he was not God. God. They, 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 they accused him of blasphemy. Okay. Blasphemy for what? Of but claiming they, to be God? They said, you, being a man, makest yourself God. And how did he respond? You learned about yeah. accusation. How did you respond to them? Then he just slipped away. He always oh. Oh. No, 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 no. He answered. He answered. It's, it's he answered. Saying, oh, he said, oh, oh, it's written, ye are God. Ah. Yeah, I know what you're on about. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you mind? Do you mind? Do you mind explaining his his it's response? Easy, easy. Just, <laughs> he said that ye are God. No, no. How? I'm thinking, I'm thinking about good. That verse, yeah. How is his response adequate? Adequate enough? Yeah. To free him from any accusations that they levied against him. What was the nature of his response? Well, it's, I don't actually know. Okay. He, was a psalm he said, he said, look, it's written in your law and the scripture cannot be broken. Meaning he knows it, they know it, they can't hide it anymore. It was in a, do you know what psalm it was? Do you know? Yeah, psalm 82. 82. 82. 82. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's saying in that psalm, God calls ordinary human being yeah. who are judges yeah. you are Elohim you are God and wait wait and you are the children of the most high but you will die like men yeah. so there God addressed human beings that you are God yeah. those judges imagine I'm one of those judges imagine yeah, I am yeah, one of those judges and I said yeah, yeah. I am God yeah. am I blaspheming I think the Elohim is also you. Oliver, yeah, 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 yeah. if I said I am God, I am Elohim, I'm being one of those judges in Psalm 82. Well, it depends on what context. If you meant like God is in, in no, the beginning. No, 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 Elohim. Elohim. God calls me Elohim and I said I am Elohim. If I am Elohim, because yeah, yeah. God called me Elohim, that would not be a blasphemy. So Jesus says, look, this is what happened. And I did not say, except that I am Ben Elion. But I think he says something else. Ben Elion, that's son of the, the, Elion. Son of the, no, yeah. son of the uh, most high. Yeah. So Jesus son didn't say I'm God. That's in he said, I only said I'm a son of Elion. No, but it's, uh, so, ben Elion. which is more Aramid blasphemous? Aramid, yeah. To call yourself God or son of God? Depends. If you mean in your context, if you mean the judges sort of Elohim, that God, then no. that's not blasphemy. God, calling yourself God is more blasphemous than calling yourself son of God. Yeah. So he said, I didn't say, I didn't call myself God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I didn't even blaspheme as you say. But I only said, I'm Ben Elion, son of God, like you believe in sons of God by the tons in your scripture. Adam is the son of God, Ephraim is the son of God, David is the son of God, yeah. the begotten, Jacob, Jacob I firstborn. A, I think there's a unique sense in that Christ's no. sonship. I'm going to the my father and your father. No uniqueness. Jesus makes it absolutely clear. So he said, I'm going to my God and your God, my father and your father. There is no distinction. I think here is the problem, like when you read John 10, 30 to 34. A great prophet has appeared among us. They said, God has come to help his people. So Luke 7, 16, John 4, 19. Sir, the woman said, I can see that you are a prophet. One, uh, Matthew 21, 11. The crowds answered, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Many, many verses in which you have Jesus being identified by the people yeah, yeah. that he's a prophet of God. So if Jesus went along preaching that he was God, yeah. people would have known that he was God. No one would have dared. Prophet. 
Call him like you're other than God. And he's admit to it when they say to him a prophet. He didn't say, oh, yeah. how dare you. So now you realize, my friend Oliver, history, contemporary people, Bible as the scripture, all goes against the current form of Christianity and the Christian teachings. Instead, we invite you to accept God of Jesus Christ and worship him alone. Don't worship Jesus and Moses and Jacob and Solomon. Worship the God of Jacob, God of Moses, God of Jesus, God of all the prophets. Peace be upon them all. We, we invite you to worship the one who is worthy of worship, which is not Jesus Christ, which is not the Holy Spirit, which is the one who deserves our worship, who is absolute, not deficient of anything. Of that day, of that hour knows no one, not, the son not even the angels in heaven, not yeah. even the son, but only who? The father. The father. The father. So the father is the only one worthy of your worship. And he's the one who sent the final messenger after Christ so that you can be removed from this confusion. Because clearly now you realize all of these things that the churches have been telling you, they are telling you porkies. Why? To deceive you. You are an intelligent young man. And you know in your heart, you cannot worship a tripod or a camera or a tree or a sun or a man or a woman, but you should only worship the one who is worthy of worship, Allah who is Allah, God, Lord of all creation. Can I ask you, what, uh, our invitation uh, to let you. Me, let me, let me. You guys no, 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 just, uh, Oliver, Oliver, just wait, just wait. By the way, uh, before, because you, you deceived me, I said, no, 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 wait, wait. But I am willing, because since you had a nice discussion with our senior yeah, here, Brother Mansour, look, I will answer your question regarding the hadith, no problem, I will continue and answer it, yeah? Now, you would like to answer Brother Mansour here a question, go ahead, and I yeah. will finish yeah. the hadith. Yeah, so so, so I, will, I will end here with this invitation. Um, we want to invite you to this La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, which means that you, 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 you accept no one as your God worthy of worship, except one and only God, and you take the final messenger as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu he is the servant of God and messenger of God, and at the same time accept Jesus Christ being the messenger of God, at the same time accept Moses being the messenger of God and so on, you don't lose anything, you gain the truth and nothing Every but the truth. So, are you willing to accept Islam? No. Okay, no. that's fine. So I'll let you continue with my, uh, my dear Sheikh uh, on the discussion that you're discussing. Thank you. um, may God open up your heart and your mind. Go and pray Asr because I'm going to finish this and go and pray Asr. the truth so that you save yourself from the hellfire because if you persist on as you are, Hellfire will be only a boat and destination and there will be no coming out. And Hellfire okay. leads on to our topic that we have. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's, no, no, I want, I say to you, I say to you, I say to you, since, since, since you've, uh, you've showed yourself of being a gentleman, Thank you. I'm willing to finish the conversation we've started. Okay. Okay. Now, let's stick with the hadith and don't jump to another hadith yeah just stick I, I with the hadith have, of, three, okay no problem i know the three you see that's why i say to you how did you how did you think i knew that you jumped another hadith if i don't know the three so i cannot open the tab but i forgot about your eyes yeah you saw me swap no 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 but you you should have told me look yeah, yeah, yeah. this is one hadith i'm moving to the second hadith right. i would have understood it right. but you were quoting half a hadith and then you jumped into yeah, the second yeah, yeah, hadith I know it. You, you understand yeah, 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 yeah. That, that I found that disrespectful towards me. Yeah? Yeah, 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 and I'm an old man, so you would think that I know a, a thing or two more I than you. Yeah, yeah. Elders, yeah. So, so. I'm sorry. Anyway, yeah. No problem. Now, look. As I say to you about the exegesis. Now, that hadith that you're speaking about, yeah, yeah, yeah. the first hadith. If you go to, it's Abu Musa al Ash'ari, but you own Abu Darda or two. But if you go in it, there is someone called Shaddad Abu Talha. Shaddad Abu Talha. This Shaddad Abu Talha is the weak link in there. Is the weak link in there. Now, being the weak link, which that's what makes that hadith da'ib. Now, if you go to look for the hadith, you see that Imam Al Bayhaqi, rahmatullahi alayh, did say it's da'ib regarding this hadith. That Imam Ibn Hajar Al Asqalani, who is the exegete of the uh, who is the exegete of uh, Imam, uh, uh, Islam Bukhari, uh, Hadith uh, Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Alayhi? Okay. He also said that about that according to what he followed the, the opinion of Imam Bayhaqi, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, and Imam Al Dahabi, too. Yeah. 
the, then we have got the contemporaneans. Yeah. Imam Al Albani. Imam Al Albani, Rahmatullahi Ali, also said about the hadith is da'if. Then he changed his opinion. He said, no, it's sahih. Then when he went into the chain of narration and he found again Shaddad Abu Talha, he said this is the weakest link. Then he described this hadith in his Silsila Da'ifa, his Da'if chain, 